Hello, I have the pleasure today uh, of uh, sitting with Natalia Kutz, who is a young and promising re-speaker. And first of all, Natalia, I wanted to ask you, uh, how did you get into re-speaking? And do you think this is an interesting career for you? I think it's definitely one of the most interesting occupations I've ever had. And it all started actually with audiovisual translation in general and with subtitles. And that's how I found, gradually found my way into re-speaking from subtitles through audio description and through re-speaking. You told me earlier that uh, some years ago you worked for television and you were involved in live subtitling and semi-live subtitling in a broadcasting environment at a television station. Is there any difference uh, in creating subtitles for television as opposed to live events or is it just the same? I wouldn't say it's the same. There are some similarities but there are definitely uh, differences and mostly then concern uh, the pressure of a time constraint I would say because in television uh, some subtitles are uh, broadcast semi-live and there are often time to prepare them beforehand, before they're uh, broadcasted. And the problem with live events is that everything is happening in real time, so definitely the pressure of it is, is much bigger. Can you walk us through uh, what the work of a re-speaker looks like in a live event? What exactly do you do? So the speaker is talking and as someone is uh, unfolding the presentation on the screen or on the scene, we are trying to, we are listening to it and we are trying to repeat it, sometimes word by word or sometimes some reformulation is needed. And um, then we also add um, um, interpunction and uh, then the moderator uh, who is sitting next to us is usually trying to make some a last moment changes and small correction to it and then it is broadcast. Could you tell us how do you prepare for a re-speaking assignment? I think it's definitely one of those jobs that you can't just prepare for them like a week ahead. Uh, it's definitely more the matter of weeks and months of preparation and special training uh, in advance. and. Um, what is happening just before the event, it, and what definitely helps, is research which is suited uh, specifically for a particular event. So if it, for example, um, if it concerns, um, I don't know, uh, it's a conference which concerns a specific topic, it is always better to read beforehand on the given topic and try to educate oneself on it. And what is also needed is the standard preparation of any interpreter, so the names or the proper names, the guest speakers and so on and so forth. Uh, if you could imagine that tomorrow you have a re-speaking assignment and it's an evening or the day before, uh, what exactly are you doing to prepare yourself for this uh, event? I would definitely make a list of names and proper names that could appear in a given, during the given event. Of course, as far as I can expect them. And then I would acquaint myself with the pronunciation, uh, with some traps that might be hidden here and there. And then I would need to work with the software beforehand to try and introduce the um, the new words into the dictionary of the software so that it is easier for the software to recognize the words and properly write it. Okay, uh, do you think there are some challenges involved in working uh, for live events uh, which are not there when you work for television? Is there anything that's more difficult or just that this is just not the case when you work uh, for television subtitling? I think television subtitling definitely gives you uh, more time to prepare and more time to work on the subtitles and during live events everything is happening just word by word in, in real time. 
And also, I think one of the factors is the stress connected to the fact that you are usually present during the event. So you can see the audience react in real, life, in real time, you can see the speakers react, and there are many more. The television programs are always scripted, at least in some part, and you can predict how um, someone is going to, what someone is going to talk about and what are going to be the main topics. And during live events, there is always a chance that it's going to go in a completely unexpected direction. Could you perhaps tell us something about the recent re-speaking assignment that you had? Uh, I think my, mo interesting, my most interesting assignment recently uh, has had to be at the Q&A session during the um, premiere of the new Witcher series, which was produced and made by Netflix. And it was in Poland, it was a huge event because the um, series of books which the show is based on is very, very popular. And we are responsible for the live subtitling from English into Polish and uh, during the Q&A session with the main cast, with the producers. And uh, um, I think just the topic was interesting, but also the stress connected to the event was really, really, really high. We've decided to work with the, uh, with the interpreter who was already on the site, which allowed us to focus more on introducing the um, new words into the dictionary, which was especially difficult in this particular case, because uh, the books and the show uh, are from the high fantasy genre, which means there are a lot of proper names. Wow, this Witcher event sounds really interesting. Uh, I wish I had been there. And it also sounds like it's an interlingual uh, assignment. Uh, so how exactly did it work? Did you uh, re-speak from one language to another or what was your setup? In this particular case, there was an interpreter on the site who was responsible for feeding the translation right into the headsets from, for the main cast, so that the communication between the cast and the interviewer was facilitated. And what we did was to, base, to work subtitles based on what the interpreter was giving us, which was only possible because of the high quality of the translation made by the interpreter. If the interpreter failed us, it wouldn't have been possible to do it like that, and then we would have to be uh, the responsible ones for providing uh, the initial translation process as well. So we would have to translate, sorry, interpret, and um, enunciate it in the way that facilitates making the real life subtitles at the same time. Okay. Uh, in your opinion and from your perspective, is there an advantage to working with an interpreter? Uh, and perhaps is there some, are there some advantages uh, working directly and being an interlingual re-speaker? I think it largely depends on the interpreter because uh, there are some advantages. Definitely the, the thought process that is needed uh, to produce the um, live subtitles when there is also an interpreter on the site is uh, much shorter. So there is one person responsible for translating the words and there is another one responsible for making them into subtitles. And there is also the moderator, of course. Um, but also, I think being the interlingual um, press speaker has its own advantages, which is that one is completely in control of the process. So one can count on themselves to um, make into subtitles exactly what we want to make. So we can choose ourselves the points that we want to focus on and the things that we deem the most important in whatever the speaker is talking about. You have experience working as a re-speaker, but also as a moderator or the person responsible for the live correction of the text that is then displayed on screens. What's the difference between these two roles, the role of a re-speaker and the role of a moderator. I think there is definitely a difference in the skills that are required to do so, of course. Uh, the rest speaker and the moderator, they work with the software from completely different ways and from completely different directions. I personally, I think I prefer to be the rest speaker because then I can just say the words and 
be done with it. <laughs> you can call it that way. But moderator, I think, is our last line of defense, I would say. And I think it is a very, very responsible job. So I think in some ways it might be even more stressful than being the speaker, because the moderator is the last person that has the last chance to correct whatever the speaker said, and is the, the last person that has any sort of influence on the final output.